Support for 100 Watts in a Wire is provided by BioNO Power. If you're looking for a power solution, check out BioNO Power, offering the best performance lithium phosphate batteries for your ham radios. Visit BioNOPower.com. That's B I O E N N O P O W E R.com. Or contact dealers nationwide. And ICOM, contest remotely or from the comfort of your own home. ICOM has the perfect base station. The IC9700, 7610, or the 7300 SDR transceivers are the top of the line and are the first choice for contesters across the globe. Robust base stations like these cut through pileups, letting you work the bands and record those contacts. Stay connected and keep your competitive contesting edge. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on all ICOM radios. And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Hey, 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 hey. Good evening to you. Welcome to episode 313. We're talking about waiting for your call sign, but there's so much more to talk about. Good evening to you if you're watching us live doing the live stream. Hello, whenever you're listening to the podcast going out. My name is Christian. My call sign is Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel. Happy to be with you here tonight. Children around, family around, wash machine happening. You're going to hear a song being played to let the humans know your laundry's done. Actually had to cut off the dryer because of the heat. It was putting out so much heat. And all that rigmarole. Uh, but welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we record this, stream it out live on Sunday evening now, 7 o'clock Central Time. You're welcome to join us here. We've got a live chat going. And uh, also, you can listen and subscribe to the podcast. Take it with you wherever you like to be. So much going on. I need to talk about it real quick. I would like to thank ICOM for being a sponsor uh, since the beginning of 100 Watts and a Wire. On Friday, I decided I was going to end that sponsorship deal. Uh, No hard feelings, no strains, whatever. It just felt like, uh, as Neil Young says, comes a time. So uh, thank you to them, especially Aaron in the office in Seattle, who's always uh, taking care of us uh, as we've gone through the years with whatever it may be. I appreciate ICOM and still love the gear. Another change in my life. Another change in my life could be, I better not bring up Sidecar Steve right now. They'll be like, no, you can't take this, you son of a... you." Son. Somebody told me today, Steve, they would come watch the show if uh-huh. I could guarantee that you would be on it. And I was like, really? Ain't that a mess? <laughs> Here goes. I'm like, okay, alright. Well, if he's not putting out a fire, we can expect to see Steve, Sidecar Steve. Good evening to you, sir. Well, good evening, Christian. What's going on uh, what, way out where you are? We have had these weeks, crazy town weeks. Like, where am yeah, I? It's been weeks? work-wise, it's been crazy town. and uh, mm-hmm. But uh, the weekend's been great. It's been, uh, the weather's kind of cooled off a bit. Uh, we had some rain uh, Friday, which kind of made it nice. Uh, got about 0.36 inches of uh, rain so that was a nice little slow soaker and uh, cleared out all the smoke and uh, other than that it's been a a real good weekend Uh, got to spend a little time on the radio and chasing uh, some stations and the European DX uh, or European contest was on this weekend so it was a good opportunity to work a lot of European stations good deal good to see the activity Saying hello to Ray. He's Whiskey 3 Oscar Yankee. You're 5'9". Five, nine, five, coming nine. into a 100 Watts and a Wire tonight. Charles is here. Good evening, Charles. He's Kilo Delta 8 Echo Foxtrot Quebec. Looking at the meter. 5'9". Five, 5'9". Nine. Five, nine. Don is here. Don is here tonight. He's Kilo Charlie Zero Delta Whiskey Zulu. Don, you're 5'9". Five, five, nine. Nine. You're 5'9". <laughs> <nine. laughs> I got to tell you, I was chasing. Let me just see if this will work. These, this is where I am. This is what I do when Route 66 comes around, if I can get it in there. Oh, man. Nice. So, so I write out all these things, and then I checked a few off. I got a little obsessed last night. I got a little 
obsessed and I'm pound and you know there's a couple in Missouri and this mm-hmm. dude I, I don't know how he's so loud but I'm like he's not going to hear me he's not he's just not going to hear me and um I'm not even sure what I think it's M or N N I think I worked N is Missouri I guess mm-hmm. and I, it was on 80 meters and I was like I am pulling them down and I'm dragging them across this guy's forehead because I tried on 40, and I know I was just jumping over him. Oh, we also have a net. We have uh-huh. a net going on tonight. There he is. Uncle Paul is in the studio in Toms River, New Jersey. I think we have his. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're there he is. <laughs> there he is. He's like, hey, where, 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 where am I? I want. Just to give you an idea. We are going, uh, we're running parallel to our Sunday evening HF net. You're welcome to join him there as well. Uncle Paul is, let's check the frequency, 7219, 72. He's drinking scotch, so in about 15 minutes, things are going to get saucy. <laughs> it's going to get really spicy. But uh, cheers to everyone here. I've got these cups my wife likes, these tall glasses. I like these little ones that are much smaller. But anyway, having wine, and uh, so cheers to everybody. Cheers. Just got the old so anyway. seltzer water. So I'm going to spot up Uncle. Go. Talk about Route 66 a little bit and uh, what you were chasing. Steve, did you work any? Uh, yeah, I worked uh, four so far. It just only on 20. I haven't uh, shot uh, anywhere else. So uh, I don't have a list like you uh, like you got set up there. I should uh, I, I would a little card. I get confused, man. I, I'm like, what did, what did you work? Did I need this guy? And it just helps me. You know, it's pretty mm-hmm. elementary, but... You know, I'm just but, doing uh, it to to show myself, like, oh yeah, you need that one, or you got that one. You got that one, and the but uh, the one that I got a kick out on, I listened to him for a while. He's a machine. He was just an absolute machine. Is the one out of New Mexico, and it was W6H, and it was uh, he would say the call at W7UDI five nine, Bill, New Mexico, and it was just the same pace over and over yeah, yeah, and yeah, over yeah. again. The guy, I. I was like, going, did he? Does he have a DVR going? Because it's just spaced out the same. Yeah, I so was when wondering. I made the contact with him, I did the same thing. <laughs> just yeah. you're five nine, Steve, Washington State. You should have you're five nine. But he's like, yeah, I'm having having a good time, Arizona. And I I worked him last night too. And I'm like, is he? Is this a, a thank you? You know, it was like thank you. I'm like, it sounds like he's triggering yeah. the recording, but I couldn't I couldn't prove it. But man, the pile man ups for this. The just consistent, and he has a great signal. So he's been a good 10, 20 over uh, up here, and it's just been great. The operators have been fun. It just all the different styles, and uh, just to uh, get a hold of them. And uh, I got the guy in Illinois just a little while ago, and uh, he got to give me the full rundown on the on the uh, his QSL information, which was pretty comical, but I I enjoyed it. There's so, so many things. Good that we want to get to in this hour that we'll be together tonight uh so episode 313 waiting for your call sign i put the question out i'm i'm doing these like community questions and it actually just has the acronym cq it's kind of kind of weird and hokey but it 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 works and um you know i put a put a question out there just to see what people will say and this week i was asking about you know when you got your license when you passed the test how long did it take you to get you know, your call sign. I see people in the modern age, you know, people who are like, I passed my test. I'm waiting for my call sign in the post, you know, and it's like 30 minutes after, you know, like, <laughs> when's it going to come? And I'm like, man, when I, in our day, 20, uh, 12, whenever it was, you know. So I wanted to see how the differences were between people in the 70s and the 80s and all that sort of stuff do you remember uh, how long it took you and the trip to the mailbox and all this oh it was at least two months easy wow uh, i think it was october when i passed my test my novice and it was late december when it finally arrived and uh yeah back then everything was done uh manually processed uh the paperwork was mailed to the FCC, and then it took them a couple of weeks to to process it and, or do whatever they had to do. And then it uh, took the snail mail to come back. And uh, yeah, it, it 
it took a while. So I think it was about two, six to eight weeks, if I remember right. But you know, we're talking 1976, and yeah. nowadays it's uh, you know, it's like a week or something that's uh, running behind. I know last year during COVID and all that other, during the the shutdown and everything, that uh, that went a lot longer. So uh, it made it tough for the for brand new. Uh, licensees because they're waiting for their call obviously when you upgrade you you can automatically uh, start using your privileges with the uh, with the slant AG or AE depending on which uh, which uh, test you passed and where you're operating so it's uh, it's been kind of streamlined a little bit over the years oh for sure and I I took about it took about two weeks I'm uh, just getting the frequency to post up here on the screen so uh, so our friends who are maybe watching our stream right now will get to see where Paul is. Let me move it there. There we go. There he goes. 7219, 100 watts and a wire net. And then Steve ends up running for a little bit. And I tell you, Steve, while I'm here tonight, if I see, I'm going to pull my log up. If I see one of these Route 66 pop up, <laughs> I'm going after it. I'm going in, man. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. I got it. a little yeah, obsessed. Yeah, they're, they're listed on the cluster, so... And uh, I got a there's some other special events that were uh, going on over the weekend. The MIA, the uh, POW MIA uh, mm, yes. event. So look for them, K4 MIA slash five or, or just straight K4 MIA. And then uh, worked uh, a POTUS station last night too. So there's been quite a few POTUS that have been out over the weekend. So it's been a busy weekend along with the contest. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, I, I like these weekends because there's so much activity going on. And I start mm -hmm. to get the feeling we're going to talk about the fallout. The fallout's October 8th through the 10th. It's something you might want to mark down now because it, the time just slips away. I mean, it was crazy. We were just complaining about how nutty August was. And here we are. We're we're on uh, September twelfth. I mean, already it's like twelfth. Yeah, it's going. Uh, it's just moving, uh, blowing right on by us. So you know, we're under a month mm -hmm. away from the fallout. We'll talk about that more. We have a page on the website called Operating Events, and just click on that. We have some sponsors that are giving away some things. It's not a contest, but we encourage you to get out and get portable if you can, because in many areas. October for you, Steve, might be getting pretty nippy, lippy, nippy, isn't it? Uh, it's getting down there. It's probably in the uh, 50s, 60s. It's okay. uh, not too bad. We're, okay. It's still short, you know, weather. So we're, we're good. Yeah. So it, it's usually a but good time for us to, to get together, get up, and get our equipment out. And I did that this week. And we're going to go back and check some of the responses of the community question in just a little bit. But so... Saturday mornings now, we know I'm, I'm with my youngest. She's seven. She's got a class on Saturday morning, and that's... I'm on dad duty, right? I'm the chauffeur. Back door open, looking around, closing it. Like, she, she's like a rock star, whatever, you know, this kind You're of thing. driving Miss Daisy. I'm doing a thing, man. I'm doing, it's the best job in the whole world. Like, it's, it's awesome. So, you know, we're doing that. She does a class. We get back. It's around lunchtime. It's time to eat. And then Daddy's got a little bit of time, you know. We got some time to kill, and I'm like, "Do you want to? You want to go out?" And and we like washed my truck on Friday, and she was just so excited to wa help wash the truck, and I was like, "Great," because I haven't really done this. All right, friends, welcome back. We uh, we are doing the net somehow. I need to get that fiber. I need to get fiber. I'm wondering if it's me. It could be me, but I'm I'm totally wired. Anyway, we will uh, we will reconnect with Steve. We'll talk a little bit more about this, and I want to go and uh, share some of the uh, things that we were talking about on Facebook when people were getting their their license. So let's go over there. I posed the question to you: If you're on the Facebook page, you'll see that, and just asking how long it took you. Here comes Steve. -O. We'll get Steve back in. We'll bring Steve back in here, I think. Yeah, here he comes. There he comes, and we'll bring him back. We can bring him in here as well. I don't know what happened. We we broke connection and, and lost all, all kind of heck oh, broke, broke loose. the internet. <laughs> the internets are broken, y'all. So yeah, uh, we had the to... internet got busted. Yeah, see... Uh, oh, you're getting blamed for the washing machine. <laughs> yeah, the washing machine. I blame it too, man. It's getting hot in here too. Like, you know, come on. Oh, yeah. 
So anyway, it's just pumping. Everybody's got to do their, their family stuff here. So we talked about how long it took you to get your license in the mail because everyone, I, I know for sure I had this anticipation. I really needed this license to come. It was just something I, I passed the test. I wanted to know. And uh, and I'm thinking it was it was probably 14 days, 12 to 14 days they said it would take. And, you know, I could feel it on the 7th and 8th and ninth day. Like, man, I, am, I would love for this to just come. I want to know what my call sign is. Is my call sign going to suck, man? Is it going to be? And it was KD0 Sierra Tango Hotel. And I kept that for a while, and then I ended up dropping the Delta out of it. So I don't know if that's considered a vanity call when you drop mm-hmm. a letter, but I guess it is. I guess it is. But I, I just dropped the D. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, some old timer around here was like, you know, that's a, that's not a bad call sign there. You know, if you drop the D, it even <laughs> you think it's better. And if you had a B <laughs> or an E in there, I'm like, is it good or is it bad? Mm-hmm. What is it, man? What is it? Anyway, it took me about two weeks, and that's really what they said. Nowadays, they're kind of spoiled. They can get it the next day or at midnight or something like that. It took Alan two weeks to get his. Steve Lewis says six weeks back in 1992. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good wait. Two to three weeks, Eric says, if he recalls. His upgrades went a little faster. Mark says he can't remember that far back. Uh, he's been operating since 1969. <laughs> 69. There you go. Nice, Mark. There you go, Mark. Hope you're having fun with four it. Four to five hours for Mike. Yeah, I mean, like, there you go. 2019, four to five hours. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India Mike. You're five mm-hmm. nine. David, uh, it felt like a year, but it was eight <laughs> weeks when it arrived in the mail. Yep, he wore out a path to his mailbox. Wow. This was the yeah, early 80s. Mm hmm. Uh, Ben says one week. That's about right. One week. Yeah, our friend Ian, I wonder how he's doing with the CW. He's supposed to be in here, you know. Speaking about our friend, listen in the background. Oh, we got to go. Mr. Phil. Sorry, guys. But he's my hero. Hang tight here, guys. We're going to listen to Phil. Thanks. Good catch. Uh, Phil is 82 years old, lives in the Northeast. Oh, let me get your signal report. I think you're going to like this. You're stronger than the last He invites us to Easter, Christmas dinners. Just amazing. And sometimes momentarily go into 35. So that's quite a bit stronger than what you've been in the past. If you've done something differently, that's the question. Question number one. Uh, question number <laughs> two. Uh, I have. Uh, it's the scotch. And by the way, all my He won't remember question one. Antennas, and they're all designed for me. <laughs> oh, you know what? We don't have him now. Paul didn't make it back in. He's been. And the tip of the ground plane would be 110 feet above the ocean level in a backyard. We got him on the radio, though. It'll be a true ground plane with 45 degree radials. So I need your opinion on that, Paul. November 2, Hotel Yankee Golf. Whiskey number one, Papa, Echo Papa, right here at Mount Hope Bay. To you, Paul. Very good, Phil. Uh, I think you're going to, let me start off with your uh, signal. Um, I think you'll, you'll like it also. Uh, it's about the same as mine. Uh, you know, yeah, definitely S9, but you're up. We're pausing in, uh, to listen to one of our, uh, making it here. Over, We're listening friend. to one of our elders, uh, our ham radio elders now. Usual. It seems like 7219 on our Sunday evening net. I'll, uh, I'll take it's them. Phil um, up in the Northeast, as as 4, 82 6, years 6, old, is, uh, military. Yeah, the retired military. Uh, used to be an old technician from the uh, The 6L6s were used in the power tube, in the power uh, power supply. Um, and um, I, I tell you what, I've got knocked by a number of 6L6s. There's Paul's a number, a number testicles. Of time. Uh, <laughs> 
and I'm sure I'm sure you have too. Uh, it, it sort of like uh, wakes you up and uh, and makes your fingers a little numb for a while. But uh, but yeah, uh, ten to uh, fifteen fact, over coming into enough, Missouri is uh, Uncle in Carl. Garage, and Tom's over in Jersey. My old uh, uh, tube caddy. I bet you I still have a, a, a couple couple six L sixes out there. But uh, yeah, good good old good old tubes. Uh, <clears throat> they're uh, they're hard to come by, but uh, yeah yeah. And, it's, it's the they're all they're all the old reliables. So, you know, just like what I have in the 922. I've got you know these are three 500 Z, uh, and they just as long as you don't uh, screw around with them and, and overpower them or, or work work them uh, um, uh, on uh, on yeah, CW while you're on side band, you're fine. <clears throat> I, you know, Not sure what the question. I missed the question. Yeah. I'm only pumping 70 watts. Listening into our Sunday evening uh, HF net for you listening on the now, podcast. So. And, it, and, it runs and we're doing a live stream Sunday night, yeah, 7 o'clock on YouTube. You're welcome to join us there as we do it. Just pausing here to listen to Phil. Uh, 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 and that's, that's what I use to uh, the cool plus the fan that's on the inside. As far as your antenna goes, uh, yeah, the ground plane, <clears throat> you should have no problem whatsoever. Uh, you had 20, 20 plus uh, radials uh, from what I, I, I believe you said. Uh, yeah, I, I used to like to run uh, run a vertical. Uh, I basically still do because <clears throat> I'm, I'm running the uh, uh, the uh, double bazooka, or better known as a coaxial dipole. So I'm not I have it in, quite in the, uh, sure. Listening to uh, some advice. Advice being given from Uncle Paul to Grandpa Phil. Mm -hmm. Scott reports he's 20 over in Knoxville, Whiskey 8 United, Foxtrot Oscar. Good evening to Steve, Whiskey 3, Alpha, Zulu, Tango. Thanks for coming by. Hello to Philadelphia today. Hello, Charles. Good to see you. We're on 7219 if you're watching the live stream. And it was like, you know, a bonus. Let's check in on Paul's testicular fortitude. Yep. The left one and the right one. Creeping up on 20 over. We, we missed, we missed yeah, he's about S6, S7 here. I have a computer. I don't know if you're, uh, if you're, if you use a computer or not. But we are on NetLogger. I always appreciate how the hams pause, take a little break because there is a, a bit of a pile up to check in, and everybody kind of understands. Well, it'll let you know what frequency on that we're on. Or if you if you get on to, if you if you are able to get on to the YouTube. Uh, Christian usually has the frequencies that I'm on and also Steve is on. Uh, I didn't write down what the, the frequency that Steve is on, but if you get on to... Uh, yeah, we kind of changed that. Steve's doing wire. like the uh, uh, after YouTube, show uh, type of part of the net, so Steve's not on yet, guys. If, if, what mm -hmm. frequency Steve is on. If I find out, uh, so I will be on... <laughs> I'm going to shoot for 14265, but we'll see how that uh, plays out. It looks like there's some activity on uh, 14266 right now, so... But we'll find a spot somewhere somewhere around there, give or take. Whiskey One, Papa Echo Papa. This is November 2, Hotel Yankee Golf. Okay, thanks, Paul. I know that November 2, Hotel Yankee Golf. Uh, there will be a few corrections here, Paul. Uh, one of which I do not have computer in the uh, radio station. Those of you in the Discord, we and, might take some calls uh, in a bit. I'm on your double bazooka. You've been using that antenna for quite a while. And boy, that antenna Look at that signal. That's pretty ridiculous, too. Real good. You don't have to go to store to buy good antennas. They're built at the sign right here. It's by yourself. And uh, one correction on the tube. Uh, I might have made a mistake. Uh, the four sweet tubes, these are television sweet tubes can use. They are six LQ sixes. Six LQ sixes. And they were the old television sweet tubes that I'm using here this evening. So, and oh, another, another uh, uh, part is uh, what my plan is for a real ground plane call. Don't forget, this thing is going to be more than 100 feet above the ocean so here. And uh, 
I just don't want to talk over him and go on because I'm going to miss him one day. You know, I'm going to miss hearing his voice, so I'm going to yield. Wonderful to hear him. Let me get off my logger there, and uh, we can look at some of the. Oh, uh oh, I just lost. We just lost Steve -O again. I'm going to continue on uh, as we should. But thank you guys for just yielding to an 82, 83 year old man who tries to check in every Sunday, and uh, generally has a great signal. Half of his antenna was up in the winter. Half of it was down, and he was still making it in. He has a firefighter neighbor across the street who helped him put it back up. So uh, looking uh, at some of your other answers, just to see, 1980, it took two months to get your license in the mail, get your call sign in the mail. Six weeks, Aura says, in 1961, it took six weeks. John says, 14 business days. That's pretty much like me and pretty much the same time frame. I was licensed first in 2013. And then every three months, basically, I, I upgraded. I got my general. Gave myself six months to study for the extra. And I think I, uh, not six months, uh, six weeks. I think I took four weeks and I uh, went and took it after that. One week in 2020, you see the differences here. J.R. Hill, it depends on which VE you go to. A-double-R-L, uh, one week or two. David said mine was during the government shutdown of 2013. Eight weeks, two days, 10 hours, and 12 minutes. It's very specific, David. Joel, 12 days, and my upgrade took 10 days to post. James tested on a Saturday, May 30th, 2015. And uh, this call was assigned on Thursday, June the 4th, 2015. Jack says aced his extra but didn't change his call. So the answer is immediately. John checks in, says two weeks. Dan, five months. Bob, 16 weeks. It was 1994 and the FCC was changing systems and had gotten behind. They peaked out at 18 weeks. Justin, six weeks for his novice ticket back in 1989. Peter, tested in May. And here's the song for the humans. But the wash machine is concluded its process. Okay. Where were we? Tested in May, had to wait uh, for the paper copy to show up in August, days before an event I was to work. Paul got his back in the pre-interweb days. He wants to say about a month. Al, six weeks in 1969. Jordan, uh, three weeks. Paul, another Paul, 14 weeks in 1994. Scott, two and a half weeks. Uh, Jim, about three hours, May 2020. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. David, uh, back when we did a mail-in novice test and all others at the FCC, it usually took a couple of months at least uh, for mine, I started receiving solicitations from the ARRL and uh, the ARRLA even and other vendors before I received my actual novice ticket. Chris says the next day, spoiled these kids. Uh, just teasing. Mike uh, took the test on a Saturday, had his call on early Monday morning. Nice. Mike, about two months in 1966. He's had several call signs since, but was originally Whiskey November 5, Papa, Sierra Echo. Robert passed his technical uh, technician exam 
November 1992, received his license in March of 1993. David, eight weeks in 1983, about seven weeks in 1992, says Todd. Six weeks for Jeff. It arrived in the mail on December 24th, 1980. That's cool. A Daryl, overnight, tested on a Sunday afternoon, call sign Monday morning. But bling! Five weeks for Leo. Eric says about eight days in 2019. Kenneth. Oh, he got his novice back in 1964. It took three to four weeks. Joe took 10 days. Now they're getting their tickets electronically the next business day. So I see. So I see. That's great. The anticipation has uh, definitely been cut down. Michael, 13 weeks, took his test in April of 1994. Five days for David, Carla, the same night as my test. Applied online after the examiner uploaded his info and chose the call. Wow, two weeks for David, 11 weeks for William, six weeks for Anne in 1979. William, 14 weeks in 1992. It goes on and on. Gingy. I'm going to call you Gingy, Ginger. One day, 2020. Uh, good evening to the folks in the chat. I see Cliff and Scott. Charles, thanks for stopping by. I see Scott and Wes. Hello to you, Wes. Been a minute. Hope you're doing all right. Looks like you're on the road and in Virginia. Motor on. We've lost Steve uh, for the moment. Maybe he'll stop back. Here he comes. So we'll bring him back in here. On the interwebs. So we're moving uh, along through this. As Steve is back. He's got his beverage. And uh, thank goodness. Yeah, sorry. It's freaking internet tonight. It's a little wacky. It's a wackadoodle. We're going through, Steve, and we're just seeing a lot of variables. I mean, somebody took their test on a Sunday, got it Monday morning. And then other week people, 14 wow. weeks. So we're going through. Joe's talking about nine weeks uh, back in 1989. Interesting to see. 14 weeks? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it took a long time. There's, there was a couple of government. It was a government shutdown mentioned a little earlier. There was a change in right. the system that went down. Uh, so we're just seeing a lot of oh, different things. Oh, that's right. I remember that now. Mm -hmm. uh, Daryl, what happened to him? He says, uh, batch file from the VE, blah, 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 blah. Okay, got it the same night. Nine, nine weeks for James. Let's nice. see. Andrew says it took his tech two weeks. Look at Kenneth. Kenneth uh, did his test in 2020, passed the test at Sunday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The very next day, by 10 a.m. on Monday, he was hooked up. Here's one. Nice. Completely contract. Oh, a contract Derek Hummer. Derek. <laughs> Six months. They also spelled my name wrong. Wow. That sucks. David, oh, 1981. Six to eight weeks. Uh, Mark, he says eight days. Took him longer wow. to get his extra to show in the uh, database. Thirteen days. Uh, two weeks for John. David says nice. something like uh, six weeks back in the mid-70s. Snail mail days. FCC issued his novice. Five Which was? minutes. Five minutes. Chris took five minutes. Come on. Five minutes. <laughs> they should make people wait. Man. Yeah, I there's Ken. They should make it wait. Uh, 1977 took about eight weeks. 1977, eight weeks. That was about me. About a week for mm -hmm. Ken. Rhea, three weeks in the U.S., four months. And uh, that would be... Uh, nine where, one. Yeah. where is she from? Where is she from? I know Trinidad. it. Trinidad and Tobago. Right. Or is it just Trinidad? No, I don't, I, I don't know, but that's where he is from, Trinidad, Tobago. Bob, about 12 hours. So many of you are spoiled. And just from 2012, I want to tell you to... That's awesome. Come on. You like it that they're spoiled. You, you just want them to get right in there. And, you know, many yeah, of us are like, come on, yeah, man, exactly. come on, stupid mm -hmm. male lady. That kind of stuff. Yeah, the eight weeks sucked. It just sucked. And I can't imagine the six months. And uh, you just... Uh, Look at this one. Nin but, uh, 1960. Wow. No, I think it's great. Ten weeks in 1960 it took Jerry to get his. Two weeks in the late 90s. That's about on par when uh, I got mine. 
Uh, Mark got his, tested mm-hmm. on Saturday, received uh, the call sign Monday morning. On and on. I'm looking down now just to see novice eight weeks for Richard. Well, uh, Banks, yeah, eight months, or eight months, eight weeks. <laughs> eight weeks for uh, D. Wizzles, eight Will weeks Banks. for Jack, yeah. eight weeks for Dexter. Ten weeks and 69, yeah, Ooh. that's about right. And we went through that here. 1996, about two and a half weeks, and that seems uh, to be about right. We didn't connect back with uh, Uncle Paul. He uh, didn't rejoin. He probably didn't know he's disconnected. He'd been drinking a little bit of the scotch, yeah. and we, we knew that. That's okay. He's busy. But he's we, a little tied up. We can see Uncle Paul's testicular fortitude every Sunday on the meters. We can see, we can see Uncle Paul right here. There's Uncle Paul, everybody. Well, there he is. He's holding steady. Oh, he's creeping up. Bob says in 1982. 1982, it took about a month for Bob. One week for John. In, uh, let's see, he got his vanity in one week in 2014. Good evening to you, Bob. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate you. Uh, Charles got some wicked noise, he said, on the frequency. And uh, on September 2006, can't remember how long it took, two weeks. Perhaps. So I sent a text to Steve today because I'm sitting here with my router, the controller, and I'm going to spin it. And it's like, yeah. No one, and I'm like, am I over? Did I go over? You know how it'll have that sort of you went too far. Uh, it's called the overlap when you kind of go too far past north, and it's light comes on, and it's like, mm, I don't know if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. That wasn't it. Somebody's tuning up, and I don't know. But anyway, I, uh, I, I'm playing with this thing here, and I'm like, this is weird. And I'm going out there, I get one of my older daughter to move the, you know, the left and the right, just to see how far, and I go out there, hear it. I made a little video. I didn't, I didn't keep that. Uh, I, I probably have it still on my phone. I sent it to Steve, and it's what I described. Next thing I know, I'm like, ants. Yeah. Ants coming out. I got... Spider. I'm talking about like a spider came out like, hey man, I was like, whoa, buddy, where did you come from? And there was a couple of them around, like, and you know, ultimately I took it down, I opened it up, and I was all, you know, there's what, and there's like all this nature stuff going on in here, and I don't know if I got shorted out, I don't know if I'm burnt up, but when I sent you that and you listened to it, did it sound like it was just like? just sad right it was binding it was just like it, there was something there binding it up and uh, it would turn like 10 degrees 15 degrees and then just bind up and uh it uh mm-hmm. exactly. hard. i still have the video but uh exactly. basically it would just turn and then stop and then uh and then it would go the other way, turn, and then then just stop. But you could hear the motor just like something's there binding up. So, and you know they're like three hundred uh, bucks. So and I, I started I, doing a little research. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Sorry, I cut you off. We have slight delay, so I I'll, I need to leave you more space. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was, I did a little research uh, online to see the build up. You know how they're made found some youtube videos and uh it's uh, pretty straightforward uh, and i was looking at the 800 which is the bigger i think you have the 450 i do and uh yeah. i it's just a lot of ball bearings in there so i'm kind of thinking that and you mentioned ants and i'm like oh boy <laughs> they were all over <laughs> they it. built a nest yeah they use my lines and in a in a past show i've showed images of a coaxial dipole or the double bazooka and the ants had used the line the wire and the rope to make their way up to the centerpiece the centerpiece had a gap where the wires were and they could get in and it was like a tunnel 
and they ended up shorting out my antenna and I don't know if they did anything to my thing and th this is the thing I I don't use that hex beam all that much you know what I mean so it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it's overused or like burnt up for some reason because I don't I'm not spinning it around all day and all night and even if I was it's built to last in my mind at least but uh, sadly uh, I went up there and ended up taking it down. I took the antenna down. The the um, hex beam is now on the ground, and I'm I'm at that point where I have to decide what I want to do. On our screen here for our friends that are joining us for the live show, I'm uh, showing the meters here, the sexy meters, and you could tell Uncle Paul likes to be sexy on Sunday nights. He's slowly creeping up. 20 over and uh, he's, he's working the guys for our Sunday evening HF net so you can check in with the stream and check in on our net you could also check in on uh, discord if you're on there we can take some phone calls sometimes as we go but anyway man I, uh, I'm at the point He's getting uh Oh Lord help us. This is one of those days. I don't know why. I think the ants are in here. It's like stop the stream, resume the stream. What do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. What are you doing? Tell us what you want to do. I am uh plugged in and everything, man. I'm all higher. I'm, I'm wired up, wired for sound. Anyway. I did not take the rotor apart, like, you know, like completely apart. Okay. But there, there are places in there that you can kind of see up and, and you know, mm -hmm. it's not open. You don't see the guts of it. But, you know, I could see the ants making There's, there's a way. gap. Yeah they, yeah. they probably made their way in there and set up shop. They're in there, and they're going down the rope, just like when they took out my thing. And as I was mention, mentioning before, we were rudely cut off by the powers that be. Um, I don't know who did it, but what, or what happened to us, frankly. But the ants. It's the ants, man. The ants are like, oh, yeah, we got him now. He's not feeling so good now, Mr. Big Boy. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I, I, uh, the hex beam is so heavy. You know, I've got this galvanized mm -hmm. pipe. And you got the rotor at the top. I've got a winch system in place. It's just, you know, it's clunky and cumbersome. And, I, and it's probably five years old. So I'm kind of at the point now where I'm thinking about trying something different. You know, the the hex beam itself has been beat up. I need to take some pictures and remind me maybe next week we can talk about this some more. And maybe like knowing when it's time to... To, to move on from it because it's banged up it's been it's been hit by a tree there was one time I had to take it down and kind of do a repair for it it could be I could get it fixed I could put it back up there but it's harder to manage this hex beam and I know our friends are going to be like you could use a you know use like a galvanized aluminum pipes you know use something mm -hmm. And I tried. And Steve's known me long enough now. When I originally put this up, we used a galvan. No, no, it wasn't galvanized. It was a an aluminum pipe. Aluminum mm -hmm. stacks. Sort of like you would take out in the field to do your portable operations. That kind of stuff. And what happened was it got... I had one pole behind it and one that I wanted to tilt up. And this one would sway. Back in the early days, it would sway. And in, until you got it up in place. And when I got it straight up, we pulled it. To, to, you know, to kind of not tie it off, but it connected to this other pole. It actually leaned up this other one. It kind of here like this. And I've changed it since then. But what we did was we bent the aluminum pole when we put this in there. Because mm -hmm. of the weight. Yeah, the weight bent it in. It's not a very heavy antenna, but when you get the rotor up there, you got this 20-foot span of hex beam. I've got a galvanized pipe, I've got a wench system, and I'm usually by myself. And if you mess up, you, it could be a widow maker, man. Like, I, I, I know there's heavier things in the world, 
but mm -hmm. one one mistake could lead me to getting clocked. You know, I'd probably be okay, but it is a consideration, you know, and the first time you have a 20-foot-wide antenna, you know, coming down, you know, it's hard to navigate. So I'm all these words just meaning, like, I may be over the hex beam, Steve. I may be, like, mm -hmm. I might be ready to try something else, and I don't know if that's natural because you've been doing it for 40 years. Do you go through these phases where you're like, you know, maybe I'll just do something different? Yeah, you do. I mean, it's it's that uh, how much effort you're going to put into it for, you know, how often do you use it? And you said you don't use it very often. Right. Um, you're not turning it around and it's just kind of, uh, you know, it's just not working out. Uh, I mean, a lot of mast installations I've been seeing when it comes to hex beams, guys are mounting their rotors down low just just to eliminate the issue that you've been dealing with with right. all that added weight at the top and then you know lightweight mass aluminum and mm -hmm. and then you're by yourself that's the bigger problem and uh so it it, it gets tough you know yeah, you ask me i just say yeah just throw up a tower and go from there but that's not in the cards for you i told my wife today she because she's very practical and mm -hmm. you know she's not so close to this where the emotions are like Am I a failure because I couldn't get the head? You know, I've got this thing for five years, right? And I've repaired it. I've put it up. I've come up with a different wenching system. like, And it was kind of fun. It's a lot of hard work, and it's a lot of maintenance, and a lot, it's a lot of wire. It's about from the centerpiece out to both sides. You're looking at about 20 feet, you know, going out that way. And I feel like I've given it a good shot. I've made contacts. It's not as high as I wanted it to be because it's so freaking heavy you know i could have put a third piece of galvanized pipe on there but you're talking about a wench is like no man click click oh no like so you know i'm at, at that 20. point you should go you know i i would say go with a tower that that would be my attitude man i would love that and i told her today because she's very practical she's like is it worth it you know because i'm like you know it's like gonna be 300 dollars for this you know, it's a. I, I can't cut to Paul because Paul is out, so I'm just showing his sexy signal that he's got going. Thank you all for your patience tonight. We're jumping around a little bit in the topics and stuff like that, but that's how we do it. And we're talking about hex beams right now because I've got, I've got one and I'm considering moving on from it uh, after the, all this time. I'm ready to. I'm kind of ready, Steve. Anyway, anyway, my, my wife sort of like, is it worth it? You know, the 300 bucks, is it worth it to you? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, like, and all the things I just described to you, it's harder. Like, if Steve lived next door in my neighborhood, we'd oh, hang out. There'd be, be an 80 foot tower. There'd be an 80 foot <laughs> tower. He'd climb it and do it. would be fine. Like, I'd just bring pizza and uh -huh. beer and, like, it's good. But, you know, it's, it's mostly like, you know, I'm far enough out in the country where there's not so many people you know i think i'm just kind of over the hex beam and uh, i put in a lot of miles with it too and i've made some great contacts don't get me wrong it's a really cool antenna i wish it was higher i wish it was 35 feet up you know then it would be killer oh yeah it's about 20 the pipe is heavy and i don't know what i'll do now i've got an open slot at the moment I don't know what I do. I kind of miss 17. I will miss uh, 17 on this antenna because I could just mm -hmm. 17 and 15. So I got to kind of figure out. I like 15 a little bit, and I like 17 a little bit. So whatever I do next, I want to try to be able to do that. And I can get 15 on 40, right? I can get a... I just can't mm -hmm. dump power into that. Uh, I don't know. I've got, I'm going to have to build a, uh, a double bazooka and 40 and then just run full legal limit at on 15 and just see, see what if we happens. burn it up. We, I think we burn yeah, it up. Let's just go for If it's a monoband, I think if it's a monoband yeah, antenna, mono. you can get that harmonic on 15 meters, but I don't think that you want to put the power in through it. Look, he's already working on the next thing. I, I thought about an off-center fed dipole too, just to what you got there, man? Now, nope. this is your next antenna right here. 
What is it? What you got? Uh oh, man. Did you freeze up? <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear you. Don't you do it in a net. Don't you do it. I, I paid my money. You're, you're frozen, but, um, but I can hear you. I can hear you all right. Hey, everybody. It's Christian setting up a uh, okay. reset. There we okay. go. Okay, you're back up. Let's talk about it. All right. What you got? Boom. <laughs> Need a this new mic. Okay. Is... <laughs> yeah, no, there went the microphone. So this is the what I had up for years, and I, I will send it to you. And it is the Radio Waves uh, Carolina Wyndham. So it's a 80 through 10 off-center fed dipole, but it has a vertical uh, radiator. So this, uh, uh, this kind of this silver or the uh, gray coax that's in front of me. Is uh, a vertical radiator. It's about 22 feet long, so works great on 17. It's 135 feet long. It's just been sitting under my table here for a while, so it's uh, well. He sees already I'll, solved my I'll problem. I'll box it up and send it to you. Throw it. Let's see how well it works. This is why Got people love sidecar. He sidecar sends people antennas just <laughs> in the mail, and then I hear about it. And like, hey, that 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 uh, antenna sidecar sent me, man, is really great. So yeah, then anyway, and then a nice man came and said, yeah, just 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 uh, just stop, just stop doing it. Like, oh, what is happening? I have no idea oh my God. what in the world is happening tonight. But uh, oh my God. Anyway, it was painful to but watch. But you look Scott. great. <laughs> you look great. So here, here, here's the uh, the Carolina window. So it will be, uh, it will uh, just a uh, couple of uh, balance and an inline, and uh, we'll throw it up and see what happens. May as well. I, I got to start looking at a, a new tree or whatever, and I'm going to take it down. I think what I'm going to do, and I'm going to move. Move my VHF UHF, which was kind of closer to a tree. Mm-hmm. It was to the left of the hex beam. Had enough space, and you know, it just goes up, and it's a two meter four forty vertical type. And I moved that over in its spot today, just to give it a clearing, because I have a nice big clearing where the hex beam was. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'll just put it over there, and that was a lot of work. But I think now that I've got a, you know, I've got one of these slots open, I, I'll try something. And maybe yeah. the number one slot will be experimental crap. Like, I'll just, I'll be like, hey, just try it. I'll yeah, just, I'll just miss 15 and, and, and 17. I don't really not play with on this antenna. Not with not this, with this one. one. I just got to find a place to hang it now. I got to find yeah. the right spot. But that's kind of sexy. I even thought about a vertical today. I was like, would I do a vertical? Oh, my. I never did a vertical. I never. And, uh, oh, I should tell you what I did when. It's this place. It's all over the place, guys. So I tell you, this is just kind of train of thought. A couple hams getting together talking about it. I used a 13 foot vertical antenna. It's called the Alpha Antenna Full Metal Jacket. I meant to tell you earlier when my daughter, we washed the truck on Friday. She's, uh, you know, not as tall as anybody, so she gets up on the top of the truck and she's like, Daddy, I can see the top of your head. I can see, like, she, she's tripping out that she's got ele- she elevation, right? She could, I'll be the lookout. So I'm like, all right, let me move us to the shade. So I drive the truck. We go over under the trees, under the couple pine trees. We're hanging out. Uh And I I knew I didn't have enough space where I was to hang any wire. But I had this full metal jacket, which is sort of like this jacked up. It's got a really beefy tripod. It's got this transformer. And then you screw a 13-foot vertical. And you can work like 80 through I don't know what, right? And I had always been skeptical about this antenna because I think right out of the box, I tested it and I'm like, I don't know if that's so good. You know what I mean? I was kind of like judgmental of this thing. And I also think I used, I think I used it during a time in the sunspot cycle, the last one, where it was crap conditions. Like I judged this antenna based on some crap. Would you know I went out there yesterday, set it up, 
I worked this station in New York. I can't remember. It was Whiskey Alpha 1, but it was the 9-11 one. He gives me a 5-9 report uh, from New York City or wherever borough he's in running a special event. I'm like, 5-9 in New York? Hold up. And so I make a contact, Alabama. I make a contact in Texas. These are all pretty pretty close. Not, nothing spectacular yet. Mm-hmm. Michigan was a trouble, right? Michigan was like, yeah, you better. And I was like, okay, well, maybe conditions are better. But I still had this 800 mile trip to New York in my pocket and I'm thinking this this thing is actually doing something would you know I worked Utah Utah is like 1100 miles and and it's west Steve you know I have problems getting west when I'm portable I I just can't work Mm -hmm. the west that much so I gotta tell you I'm like this antenna is getting getting a little more play now I think I'm fair go ahead why don't you put it in this place of the uh, where the hex beam is? You got the cable out there. Make that your number one antenna for the time being. Because it's a vertical. Uh, it's, it's it would vertical. it would be low power though. It's a hundred water. I think I, I need yeah. to check that, but I think it's a. The military uses this stuff. They they you know mm-hmm. and like fast to deploy. I mean it's so fast, and I don't know this thirteen foot whip. I think it would t- definitely kind of topple over. You know what I mean? It's definitely it's a it's a temporary. They're all temporary, but I think it's a right. temporary. Yeah, it might be better for portable. But I don't know, man. I was surprised. I, I was really I'd, happily surprised. I'd set it up out there. You got the cable out there. True. You're just you're gonna have the mass down. You just throw <laughs> that up there and call oh, it good. Oh man, let's see how it works. And then, this is how it starts. Yeah, just That's do it. How it goes. Just do just it. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> Everybody's doing it. Just do it. You know, there's two. I'm kind of think. Uh, I'm thinking a 43 foot vertical might be the uh, hot ticket. <laughs> 43 foot. Oh man, see how it goes. Now I don't feel see? so bad. I felt bad earlier that I was giving up on the hex. I just had it. You know, nah, I'm like, you're just shifting gears. I think I'm just, just ready for something new. I want to try something different. Mm-hmm. And I'll get the rotor fixed, and maybe I'll sell it to somebody. And I got the. I got this thing pieced back here. Everything works fine. It's something, something small. It's the, it's the pipe. It's the weight. It's the me being by myself that really has pushed me to like try something different, man. Wires easy. Wires cheap. You know, wires mm-hmm. light. And verticals are easy too. A little more expensive than wire, but are uh, they? It's doable. Yeah. yeah, I see. It's doable. Well, like, let's talk about it next week. Let's talk about yeah. like what some options could be. I've never tried a vertical. I think I've got some inbuilt bias to it in a negative way because I don't know. That's it's, it's what happens in the world. You uh, you uh, get this bias about something you don't know about, and I need to. I think I need to learn more about it. And maybe this is a good test. Mm-hmm. Maybe the number one slot is the test slot, and I try some stuff, man. Let's do it, Steve. Make it so, number one. <laughs> Make it so. It's in the number one slot here. Well, we've come up on uh, DX Commander. I've heard some great things about that. Uh, mm-hmm. I've, I've seen some stuff months and months ago. I've seen uh, some stuff on that, so it's good. And there's uh, quite a few multi-band verticals that are out there. Um, you know, the, uh, the R7, R9 um, is one. I think that's Cushcraft. And there's the... Uh, the BTV6, which is a high gain. So there's there's some multiband verticals that are out there that you can put in in slot one, and then it gives you all the, you know, gives you multiple bands. But uh, and you can I go, think uh, you can go lighter with the poles too, right? I mean, like I don't have to have that galvanized no, these stuff. Are, is, these are ground mounted. You mount them on the ground. You don't have to elevate them or anything. You don't have to tilt them. You, none of that. See, you just set you just set um, it up. You already have you already have the pipe in the ground. You could I just put have. it on top of that pipe there, and um, but yeah, you're good. You just you're you're perfect. Mm. Mm. There's options, lots of options. We'll have to address Speaking that next week. Speaking of options, man, you know what I should do is I should start a new stream and start going after some of these. Uh, that's what I'll do. Maybe this week. Maybe we should get together this week and chase down some of these Route 66 guys. 
I'm seeing them coming up. I see them coming up. They're they're popping up. I've got my list, and we're doing okay for the early part. I don't know if it's going to zoom in on it, but I put them on there just to check them off because I'm I'm getting older and I'll forget. I I hate to be the dupe or spend any time calling in this pile up and to be like, oh, got you already, dude. Dummy. So that's a lot going on, man. It was one of those weekends where I was operating this cool little full metal jacket alpha antenna shout out to them that's a uh steve steven uh i believe he still owns the company but i sent him a message yesterday i'm like dude i'm out here with this antenna and it's kind of rocking right now but i did it because it was so easy to set up i mean literally five seven minutes no space i just needed to get it up there and uh my daughter's you know king of the world she's up on daddy's truck and i'm like this is good i don't even have to go in the sun i don't have to run wires i'll just do it it was it was going but uh there you go so uh the hex beam is probably on the way out y'all and i'll take some pictures just to show you that it's been beat up here and i think if steve had a hex beam it's really good because the wind goes through them you know they're not getting a lot but they still do take the weather i mean they they do get beat up. They're made out of fiberglass. And I think I got yeah, a really that's... early version of the radio waves. Not that it was bad. It served me well. But it actually got snapped. There was some things that got snapped. I had to repair. And I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll and take the fiberglass starts to break down in the UV and everything. And it yeah. just, uh, you know, they, may, they, they require maintenance. Even beams. They, even, they sure. all require maintenance. And it just all comes down to... How badly do you want it? And uh, is the, you know, all the effort worth the the, the gain or or you know? So it's uh, it's a lot of it's a big choice. And then just do you want to spend all your time doing maintenance or do you want to spend your time operating? And uh, so we're good to go. And there's right. plenty of options out there, and that's what's cool. We have all kinds of options. Next week, I think we'll talk about different antennas and what people would put. I, it, that's a that's a bag of tricks there, but we could look at some verticals for sure. I, I'm really I don't know much about it, so if you're working a vertical, let me know, and then we'll maybe uh, this will be my test slot. I think that's what we can do. All right, Steve, I know you got to get busy and you like to take some calls, but uh, maybe I'll tune up and and find you and and track you down, and see how well you sound tonight. Thanks for everybody for coming by. Hello to Jack and Marty. 260. That's what we're looking at so far. All right. Look for, uh, if you're following along the stream, look at 14260 for Steve. He's going to do a post show net for a little while. Hopefully, uh, the band will hold up for you. And I think I'll stop by as well. And maybe another time this week, we'll, uh, we'll try to stream out and chase some of these Route 66. We can do that together. That oh, might yeah. be fun. That'll be fun. Yeah. That'll be a blast. All right. Well, 73, Steve, thanks for all your help. 73, Christian. Oh, you're welcome. We'll catch up again uh, next week, and I'm going to go to 14260, and here you kick them. 73, everybody, take care of yourself. Stay safe out there, and uh, we'll catch you again next Sunday, 7 o'clock here for 100 Watts and a Wire. See you later. To join the 100 Watts and a Wire community, visit 100wattsandawire.com.